Lindsay here at Tinker Art Studio in Boulder, Colorado. I hope you enjoy our new free kids art workshop series, and if you do, be sure to like and subscribe. At any point during the workshop, hit that pause button when you're ready to work on your own projects. Come on back when you're ready. I won't move on without you. Now, let's get ready to make. Studio, and today for our art workshop, we are going to be using one of my very favorite materials, wool. In this workshop, we'll be using wool to paint a project together. And I'd like to start by reading a story called Weaving the Rainbow. Now, I know that there are people of all different ages joining us. If you would like to skip ahead past my read aloud, you're welcome to just toggle and move on past this read aloud to where we start making our project. Weaving the Rainbow by George Ella Lyon, illustrated by Stephanie Anderson. Standing at her fence, the weaver sees rainbow sheep grazing in her pasture. It is spring now. It is shearing time. When they were born a year ago in the dark barn on cold March nights, when the weaver watched their mothers lick them clean for the first time, their coats were white. And they were white when she turned them out into the April fields. And in July, when she washed and combed them and loaded them into the trailer for their trip up to the state fair, they were white and bright and they won first prize. But they were getting closer to the rainbow. Fall brought their first shearing then, as, a, as the days turned cold, their winter wool grew in. It kept them warm right through the snow. Now that it's spring again, their coats are too hot, so the weaver pins each yearling between her legs and clips the rich wool close. It comes off in one piece, sheep shape. White and springy, this fleece, but carrying it from the pasture, the weaver sees rainbows. She combs the wool free of sticks and burrs, washes out dirt and stains, cards it till the strands go all the same way, and spins it, pulling and twisting a skein from the fluff till it's long and strong enough to weave. When spinning is done, the weaver draws a plan. Then she makes her dyes from plants she has gathered, indigo, goldenrod, madder. She is cooking up a rainbow in big pots. She soaks the wool like dyeing eggs. When she gets the color she wants, she hangs the yarn to dry. She won't be making cloth to wear. She'll be weaving a picture doing with wool what a painter does with paint. Let's take a look at the materials that we'll need for today's workshop. The most important item is wool roving. Now, roving comes in all kinds of different colors. Hopefully you have a packet of different colors of roving. We won't be needing too much roving today for this project. So if you have a small amount, you can probably get started with us. We'll also be using burlap. You will definitely need some towels on hand. I'm using this tray to help contain the water that we'll be working with later, but you don't need a tray like this. I would recommend working on a surface 
like a kitchen counter or something that is um, made to have water on it because we will be using water and getting a little messy later. That's why having towels on hand is really important. The last couple things you'll need is a bucket of very warm water and dish soap. Before we get started on our project, I want to make sure you have all your materials ready. We are going to be using burlap today as a base to our artwork. And I want to show you a fun little trick in order to cut your burlap. A good size to work with is about 12 by 12 or one foot by one foot. Mine is already cut in this direction to about a foot um, in width. So now I'm going to cut it by a foot in length. So to do that, I'll uh, set my ruler down. You can also just estimate. You don't need to measure um, with a ruler. And I'm gonna find about 12 inches. So here's about 12 inches on my burlap. Now to cut burlap in a straight line, what we can do is make a little snip in the bottom. And then I'm separating it out to find just one of the um, fibers, one of the burlap strings that runs in this direction. And I'm gonna take it in my hand and pinch the big piece of burlap here and pull it out. And I just pulled it all the way out, set it down. And then on my burlap, I'm not sure if you can see it, but on yours, you will see that that string that I just pulled out is missing from the burlap. So now I know exactly where to cut my burlap right in that line that I just made in order to cut my burlap in a straight line. I'll use my scissors. Cut my burlap all the way across. And now I have a nice square of burlap to work with. When we're working with roving today, I want to show you how to take small pieces of roving off of a larger ball of roving. It might, you might think that you would keep your fingers really close together like this and pull to try to get just a little bit off if you want just a little bit, but no matter how hard I pull, if my hands are really close together, I'm pulling as hard as I can right now. It won't come off. What you need to do instead is separate your hands and just kind of gently pull and you'll get a little tuft of roving that comes off of the larger piece that you have. You can then separate that out even further if you'd like by just pulling little fluffy pieces or pulling pieces apart to pull all these fibers apart. What I really love about this story is it shows us where roving comes from. Sheep. Now the roving that we have has already been dyed. So it already is, has lots of different colors to choose from. I think someone wants to join us. Um, you <laughs> the colors that you have might be different from the ones that I have, and that's okay. You will be able to create a really cool, unique piece of artwork, no matter what colors of roving you have. I am going to be teaching you a process today called wet felting, where we learn how to join all of the fibers of different pieces and colors of roving together into one piece of artwork. start by laying down my piece of burlap onto my tray. If you don't have a tray like the one that I'm using, I would recommend just laying some towels, maybe even some bath towels rather than hand towels, down underneath your burlap. We will be soaking our artwork in water today, so that will help to soak up and absorb some of the water. After I have my burlap down on my tray, I'm going to start creating a really nice soft little bed of this fluffy white roving. Now, if you don't have white roving on hand, 
you might like to choose a variety of light colored roving so that when you add more colors on top of it, you'll be able to really see those colors that you add when you start your painting or drawing with wool part of this project. So I'm going to take tufts of roving, like how I showed you how to pull it apart, and lay down a really nice fluffy bed of roving. I'm adding more pieces of roving and kind of spreading out those fibers a little bit to create this just nice fluffy kind of cloud-like little bed. And it can be pretty thin. I, I can even see through the roving to the burlap. After I've added my white roving in one direction this way, I'm going to do another layer of roving in the other direction, this way. Doing the same thing, spreading out my roving, kind of patting it down, tucking it in, making sure it's nice and fluffy and happy, filling in any spaces that look a little thin. Now this is plenty of roving to start with. And remember that if you don't have as much white as I do, you could always combine other colors together to make a bed of roving. The important thing is that you have one layer that goes horizontally in one direction and another layer that goes vertically in the other direction. Once I have this bed of roving, I'm now ready to start my painting or drawing with wool. So take a moment to think about what kind of picture or composition you would like to create in your artwork today. Sometimes I like to make artwork that is totally abstract, meaning you can't tell what it is. I can't say, you can't look at it and say for certain that it is a picture of a flower. Other times I like to make artwork where I'm trying to represent something accurately. Today, I think I am going to start by working on a rainbow because I felt inspired by the book we read called Weaving the Rainbow, and I just like rainbows. So I'm going to start by taking a little bit of red and laying it out in a rainbow shape. Now, you don't have to make a rainbow. You can make any kind of image that you would like on your artwork. Next, I'll take orange. And I actually really like this bright pink too. So I might kind of add a couple of tufts of the bright pink in here with my red. I think that would be kind of fun. I'm gonna take orange next and then continue building my rainbow. I'm just kind of gently patting it down to help make sure it's staying in the right location as I work. It is helpful if you're spreading out the fibers of your roving so that it's just really nice and lightweight and fluffy if you were to put on a big chunk of roving like this, it is going to be hard for it to stick together later when we felt our project and get everything to sort of come together as one piece. I'm gonna keep working on my rainbow and I would invite you to pause this video as you think about the composition that you would like to make on your artwork. Now that you have your composition laid out or your rowing laid out as you want it on your artwork, go ahead and add warm water to a bucket. You want this to be as warm as it can be without hurting your fingers, of course. So I have very warm water in my bucket and I'm gonna add just 
two squirts, a squirt or two of dish soap. And then mix it together to get some nice bubbles. If you have bubbles forming on the top like this, that is plenty of soap in your water. Now, I am going to be using this soapy water to start what's called wet felting. When I'm wet felting my roving, what I'm doing is I'm making all of these fibers start to stick together into one complete piece rather than all of these separate little fibers. So I'm gonna take a scoop of water with my hand and just drizzle it over my artwork. If I try to touch the roving right now, it's gonna stick to my hand and might kind of change my composition. So I'm starting by just drizzling, scooping with my hands and really soaking my rainbow in water. Before you start this process, if you're not working on a tray like I am, it would be a great time to lay some towels down underneath your burlap. Now that I've soaked most of my artwork in water, I'm gonna keep my hands wet and just kind of pat, pat, pat it down. If it's sticking to my hands, if my colors are peeling up, I just need a little more water. Once all of my roving is kind of patted down, I see there's a little space over here where I need a little more water. You can start to see the rainbow a little bit better coming through, but you'll notice that my roving is still very separate from each other. It has not felted or stuck together yet. So to do that, I am going to roll up my artwork right here in this burlap. When you're rolling, your colors might move around a little bit, and that's just part of this process. I like to roll it up like a little burrito or a sushi roll. And next, I'm gonna show you how to do what we call the sushi dance. Baby's back. This is actually a great part of our project to do while bouncing a baby because we are going to do the sushi dance. To do the sushi dance, you take your sushi roll that you just rolled up with all of your roving inside and you're going to be twisting and squeezing and you can see that water squeezing out of mine, rubbing it back and forth. This is called agitating. We are agitating the wool in order for those fibers that we talked about, all the different little pieces of roving, roving, to start to stick together, kind of like a zipper. We want to really rub and squeeze and move those little wool pieces around while still keeping our composition mostly the same so that we felt or get those, all of those pieces of individual pieces of roving to start sticking together. So go ahead and start doing a sushi dance with your wool inside your burlap. Keep it rolled up the whole time while you squeeze and push and move it and rub it back and forth and all around. We'll do one too. to unroll your artwork and see your masterpiece. I am carefully unrolling to try to keep my felt, my felted roving all together. It will peel up a little bit from the burlap. Now, if you have a lot of extra bubbles on yours, before you unroll it, you could give it a rinse in the sink 
with just clean, fresh water to help rinse some of those bubbles out. If you just have a few bubbles, that's okay. You don't need to rinse it. Ooh, check it out. You can also give it a little rinse, just a careful rinse after you've unrolled it, if you decide that you need to then. Wow. I love unrolling this artwork because it's so magical to kind of see the way that it's all felted yeah. together. This needs to be laid flat to dry so that your roving can completely dry as well as your burlap. I would then recommend using some tacky glue or if you have a hot glue gun at home or even Elmer's glue would probably work to just tack the um, your felted artwork, the roving that you felted, onto the burlap. You'll notice that while the roving is felted together, it would peel right off of the burlap. So I like to, once it's dry, just add a little bit of glue to help it stick down. If you had any large chunks of, or large pieces of um, roving that you put on, you might notice that once it dries, it starts peeling up a little bit. I would again recommend using a little bit of tacky glue or glue that you have at home to just tack down the little spots where some of the felted roving might peel up. Thank you so much for joining our workshop today. If you enjoyed this workshop, please be sure to like this video and subscribe and share your artwork with us. I would love to see what you're making. Send me an email. If you're on social media, tag us on social media. Thanks so much. See you next time.